Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Five Minutes Sarcoma Talk podcast on Onco Daily. I'm Shoshan Hoxepian, a pediatric oncologist from Armenia, and I'm thrilled to be your host today. Uh, today, we have a very special guest, uh, Professor Andrea Ferrari, who is a pediatric oncologist working at the Pediatric Oncology Unit of the Instituto Nazionale Tumori di Milano. Uh, his clinical and research interests are focused on adolescents and young adults uh, with cancer, and he holds various leadership roles in international childhood cancer study groups and advisory boards. He is the chair of uh, NRSTS uh, Scientific Committee within European Pediatric Soft Tissue Sarcoma Group. And uh, finally, he is my mentor who taught me everything about sarcomas from A to Z and uh, really sparked my interest um, in sarcomas. So welcome, Professor Ferrari. Thank you, Sushan, for the nice introduction. Thank you for being with us today. And let's start from the background. What are uh, non rhabdo soft tissue sarcomas? How would you define this group of tumors? Yes, when we talk about non rhabdo we should know that we talk about a very heterogeneous group of different tumor type. Uh, under the definition of non rhabdo we include a, a low-grade tumor with a very benign course, but also very highly malignant disease. Uh, with a very poor outcome. And this is, is one of the major problems because under the same definition, we include very, very different tumors. On a general rule, we can say that non rhabdo are characterized by a scarce response to chemotherapy, uh, by the fact that they are rare tumors, less than 3 4% of the uh, pediatric cancers. Uh, most of them are more typically found in, uh, in adults. Um, and uh, this is the main reason why it is difficult to build a clinical trial on our rhabdo, just for the, the heterogeneity. Yeah, that's uh, very um, important to know because a lot of people uh, don't uh, know that uh, definition of non rhabdo soft tissue sarcoma, especially taking account the fact that it uh, has uh, more than 60 uh, subtypes. And um, what are the key challenges associated with the treatment of NRSTS? Uh, and can you provide us with some historical overview of the treatment during the years? Yeah, one, one of the main issues is that uh, we can say up to 2000, 2005, no rhabdo uh, were really orphan diseases. Uh, no rhabdo were treated uh, all together on the same uh, uh, clinical guideline. Uh, low-grade tumor with the same treatment of high-grade tumors, and the treatment were adopted for the one used for rhabdomyosarcoma, that is clearly a completely different disease. Just to say that uh, there were no clinical trials. Uh, the two largest published series were single-center series, uh, the one from the St. Jude of Memphis and the one from the Instituto Nazionale Tumori of Milan. And uh, the key point uh, of uh, the history of Norando, it is uh, around 2005. Uh, around 2005, the two major um, cooperative international trials, the Children of Oncology Group and the European Pediatrics of Tissues of Common Study Group, developed uh, in the same times uh, two very similar clinical protocols uh, fully dedicated to Norando. Uh, the ARST0032 from the Children Oncology Group and the EPCG non rabdo 2005. The two protocols was, uh, were very similar in the philosophy, in the clinical approach, in the risk stratification, in the treatment that were adapted from the uh, adult history. And we can say that these two trials uh, really represent today the benchmark uh, for, the, for the history, for the treatment of non rabdo and they were able to develop it also a sort of uh, standard treatment uh, for all the non rabdo histotypes. Uh, yeah, that's uh, enlightening to see that um, during the history, uh, the approach to treat uh, NRSTS uh, um, changed a lot. And uh, in your ideal imagination, how do you envision the future of clinical trial design for pediatric NRSTS, especially in terms of incorporating innovative therapies and emphasizing also patient-centered outcomes? We say that uh, many things changed over the area, but we are still treating uh, non rhabdo in, uh, in in few different types of uh, of uh, treatment approach. We have the definition of adult type uh, non rhabdos that are uh, sarcoma, MPST, epithelial sarcoma, and so on, and uh, we treat them according to a risk stratification where we use the uh, tumor grade, tumor size, tumor site. Uh, the degree of initial surgical resection to define uh, 
uh, a surgical group, a radiotherapy group, an adjuvant group, a neo adjuvant group, but we still continue to treat them according to the same treatment approach. Ideally, in the future, we should find a way to treat according to the histological or even better, the molecular characteristic of the tumor. Uh, the problem is that uh, non rhabdo are rare, are very rare, a rare in pediatric age in particular, are rare also in the adult age. And so there is the, uh, uh, the big problem to think, uh, to, to think to the ideal approach to non rhabdo to uh, be able to develop a, a clinical trial uh, just for the molecular. Uh, target or just for the histology to, to be more simple, but we don't have the number to do this. So uh, the first issue is to try to work together in a, in a trans-age view, uh, working together with adults. Uh, this is not easy because uh, uh, we know that the, the, uh, uh, the pediatric sarcoma community and the adult sarcoma community are very different for many, many reasons, but uh, change, uh, the situation are changing over the years and now we are starting to work together to think uh, uh, protocol together, exactly what you say, to try to incorporate uh, all the, the novelties that are coming in particular from the other group in terms of uh, uh, better understanding the tumorogenesis of the tumors, to find a better molecular characterization, to think to a better risk stratification on basis of tumor size or basis of molecular characteristic, and to find new target therapy that can be incorporated in the treatment. Yeah, uh, you uh, very well mentioned all the challenges, and uh, I would like to mention uh, one as well. Also, the funding, uh, taking into account the fact that uh, NRSCS are very rare, funding uh, is uh, something that uh, is also challenging because there are no, uh, there are not many um, companies that are interested to invest in such rare uh, disease. And uh, reflecting on your journey as a pediatric oncologist, uh, how uh, you started uh, specializing in soft tissue sarcomas and um, uh, uh, could you uh, share with us uh, your journey? Well, it's difficult to say. Uh, uh, when we started to, when I started to work on in soft tissue sarcoma, uh, the, the major focus was on radomyosarcoma, sarcoma, and, as, as many of us. Um, but as I said before, um, I think that uh, it was really of great interest for me to to see how. Uh, when, when st we started to work, when we started to work together with other colleagues, how non rhabdos were really often diseases. They were really neglected. There was nothing on rhabdos. This was the major reason to uh, to focus uh, uh, our attention, my attention to to non rhabdo, and in particular uh, to try to change something in terms of uh, uh, thinking outside outside the box, where the box at the time was. Uh, uh, the pediatric uh, um, world that was really closed, uh, no relationship with the other worlds, uh, difficult to work together. And I think that uh, one of the major issues, also when I'm thinking about the, the way to, to build uh, a new treatment approach for uh, AYA, for Adosha and Yang I think that the, 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 the real idea was to work together. Uh, there is a, a nice sentence that we use sometimes that say, when uh, you work uh, with the common cancer, do randomized trials. When you work on rare cancer, find friends. And so the idea was really to find friends, to find cooperation, uh, to find people that can help us uh, to build a better treatment approach, uh, better knowledge for this patient that was really neglected. And I think we, we change it. Uh, many things. So what we are doing together is very different from what we did in the past. And for the future, we are really thinking to open uh, our mind to worldwide cooperation, uh, transatlantic cooperation, cooperation together between pediatric and other worlds. Because there are a lot of things to change. You mentioned the problem of uh, the access to clinical trial and to new drugs for, uh, for pediatric patients. This is a major issue. Uh, because uh, sometimes uh, the drugs that are available and they can be interesting in the adult soft tissue sarcoma are not available for children. So there are a lot of things uh, we need to change and I think we are changing. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, that's very inspirational. And lastly, uh, what is your advice to young pediatric oncologists interested in sarcomas? Oh, I don't know. I think it's important that uh, a, uh, for young oncologists, you need to find your interest and to dedicate yourself to, to this interest. My impression, uh, looking to, to my experience, but also to experience of other, other colleagues, is that uh, in the current oncology, in the current pediatric oncology, you cannot be an expert for everything. So it's important you find uh, your tumor types and you dedicate yourself, uh, yourself uh, 
uh, with the, all your energy, with the, your all, uh, uh, beauty, with your all, uh, everything to, to this kind of tumor uh, for research, for cooperation, for clinical studies, always taking in your mind that we do this for our patients because everything is done for the patients and not just for the value of research. That is sometimes it's the same, but sometimes not. Yeah, that's very correct. And uh, thank you for sharing your insights and uh, thank you for your time. I know that you are extremely busy. Uh, and uh, to our listeners, I hope you enjoyed our uh, discussion. Join us next time for more uh, conversations about sarcomas. Stay informed and goodbye for now. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.